السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I'm Ashraf Khater, professor of surgery, Mansoor University, and this is the surgery for the medical students. Now we will speak about the squamous cell carcinoma as an example for the malignant ulcer. Squamous cell carcinoma as an example for the malignant ulcer. What about the instance of the squamous cell carcinoma? We mentioned that the basal cell carcinoma is around 80% while squamous cell carcinoma is around 15%. It is less common than basal cell carcinoma, alhamdulillah. And what about the risk factors? The same risk factors for the basal cell carcinoma and the hereditary factor also is present. These are the risk factors for the squamous cell carcinoma. What about the types of the squamous cell carcinoma? It may be in situ, squamous cell carcinoma, maybe pound disease, maybe erythroplasia of kerat in the genitalia it is uh, squamous cell carcinoma in situ and it may be invasive uh, squamous cell carcinoma and it may be what we call marjoline ulcer what about the marjoline ulcer this is a photo for the marjoline ulcer it is a squamous cell carcinoma on top of scar it is a squamous cell carcinoma on top of scar the commonest scar is the burn 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 scar and there is ulceration on top with, with a classic squamous cell carcinoma ulcer on top of burn or maybe other scars or maybe on top of lichen planus for example it is a strange ulcer it is not the classic squamous cell carcinoma it is slowly progressive till uh, cross beyond the uh, border of the scar because the scar is a limiting factor when cross the border of the scar it will spread rapidly and spread into the lymph node so usually it is with rare lymph node metastasis unless it crosses the border of the scar it will produce the classic lymph node metastasis and it is very aggressive because it is on top of the scar and the scar produces um, fibroblast cross factors and some cross factors to the ulcer it is an aggressive ulcer it is not uh, indolent one what about the microscopic examination? The squamous cell carcinoma is characterized by presence of central keratin and what we call cell nest in an, a classic malignant acidophilic cells. This is the microscopic examination. What about the gross picture of a squamous cell carcinoma? As we see, there is many examples for the uh, squamous cell carcinoma ulcer. It is a classic ulcer with indurated base, with raised everted edges, with a necrotic floor, with a positive lymph nodes, for example, it may be positive or negative, and about the distant metastases, distant metastases are around 3%, but of course, with increase the tumor size and invasion, with the possibility of distant metastases will increase. What about the prognostic factors of the squamous cell carcinoma? The most important prognostic factor in Squamous cell carcinoma is the lymph node metastasis. If it is N0, the five-year survival rate is around 90%. It will drop in a case of N1 into 70% five-year survival rate. If it is N2, it, it is 50% or less. And in presence of distant metastasis, the five-year survival rate is around either 0 to 15%. So the most important prognostic factor in squamous cell carcinoma is the lymph node metastasis. Other prognostic factors, of course, it is worse if the tumor is beyond T1, beyond two centimeters, the depth is more than four millimeters, presence of N2 or N3, presence of poorly differentiated tumor, presence of recurrent or metastatic disease, presence of immune compromisation, for example, in a patient with HIV positivity, for example. And then the TNM staging of the squamous cell carcinoma. TNM staging of squamous cell carcinoma, we can say TIS, which is bound or erythroplasia of kerat. TX cannot assist, excised, for example. TO, TO or T0, it is occult cancer. There is lymph node metastasis, but there is no primary tumor. T1 below 2 cm, T2 from 2 to 4, T3 more than 4, T4 invasion of the surroundings. About the N, N0, there is no lymph node. 
N1, it is an ipsilateral lymph node less than 3 centimeters. T2, either ipsilateral or contralateral from 3 to 6 centimeters. And N3, more than 6 centimeters. And M, there is M0 and M1 in case of presence of distant metastasis. Again, the most important prognostic factor is the lymph node metastasis. Of course, investigation in the case of squamous cell carcinoma, I must take biopsy of the edge to ensure the pathological diagnosis. I must do radiologic investigation to exclude lymph node metastasis and distant metastasis. What about the treatment of the squamous cell carcinoma? What about the treatment? The main target of treatment of the primary tumor is excision with good safety margin. Wide local excision with good safety margin, and here the safety margin will increase. In the face, it is about a half centimeter, five millimeters. In other areas like the trunk, for example, it is one centimeter all around, and to be assured by the frozen section, assured by the frozen section. Of course, other lines of treatment of the primary, if it is irresectable or locally advanced, we may use chemoradiotherapy, for example. We may use cryotherapy, for example. But the main line of treatment of the primary squamous cell carcinoma is wide local excision by surgery. Here, there is lymph node metastasis. How to deal with lymph node metastasis? If it is positive, either clinically or by ultrasonography, I must do lymph node dissection, lymph node dissection. If it is negative, there is 30% possibility of occult metastasis, especially if the depth increases more than four millimeters depth. So I must do what we call sentinel lymph node biopsy. Sentinel lymph node biopsy, it is a technique. We will discuss it later on. And lastly, in the advanced cases, we may use palliative either palliative treatment or palliative chemoradiotherapy and this is about the squamous cell carcinoma we mentioned the instance the risk factors the microscope the gross picture or the clinical types we mentioned the prognostic factors the TNM staging the investigations and the treatment and the final prognosis and lastly i wish you the best of luck and much of luck wa assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh